So. Hey, you get that? How's it going? Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I think you've turned up just as we've got rid of the glitchy problems, I hope. I hope. Slimey so, we're going to be carrying on with some of this. Uh, do we have anything to hand in? I don't think we need that marker anymore now. Yeah, we can get rid of that marker. Um, I think... I think we're, we're done in town. But whilst I have a look through the quest, how are you doing anyway? Looking forward to the weekend? Find the witch, that's to the north. The undead scourge is to the north. Uh, I think this is all... Oh no, Headless Nick isn't. Ah, yes. Yes, there's a head. In, talking head in town. We have to go and see. Oh, and the kitty love. We've got to go and see the cat in the inn. Let's go and see the cat in the inn. And get rid of these uh, annoying, shouting, rambling NPCs that we've got down here. Hey, Kootik. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, although my day seems to have disappeared rather fast today. I'm trying to look back over it. And, th and think what I've actually got done. I'm thinking, six o'clock. I've had a workout today. That was good. But where's the rest gone? I mean, I I've been up since like early this morning and I'm thinking, I, I can't count. There's no productivity taking place in the other seven or eight hours there um, that there should have been. And I'm, I, 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 I don't know, one of them days. It's not been a bad day though. Uh, the trouble is, I'm kind of getting used to days days like this with uh, the lockdown stuff and uh, regular work not being quite so demanding and all the rest. So yeah, it's uh, it's strange times. It'll be a bit of a shock when things return to normal, I think. Right, let's head in there. So we've got a cat. Is that the cat licking its balls? Let's go and talk to the cat. That's Unsinkable Sam. Was that the cat's name? That wasn't the cat's name, okay. These two don't like each other at all. You miss the aging Jedi days? Those were the days? Still the same aging Jedi. Just playing different games, that's all. Where's this cat then? Is there a cat upstairs? I don't want to go downstairs. Let's go take a look upstairs. There's no cat in there. Was there a cat up here? Citizens. I don't think there was. I think we dealt with everything up here. Sounds like the sea outside. Okay, I, I see no cat. Maybe that was the cat. It just didn't give me any options. There'd be no cat down here. Not if uh, there's rats running about. Does it say that's not empty? No, it does say it's empty. Okay, let's go back and try and talk to the cat again. Don't quite know what was going on here. What was the quest called? Kitty Love. After defeating a giant sea spider, we found a fancy collar belonging to a certain Sam. Yeah, that's him. I thought it was. Meow. Have I got the wrong character on? Oh, I need the one with, with pet speak, I think. Ah, that's got it. Never saw you in the King Crab before. You're welcome to scratch me behind the ears if you like. Just one second. Scratch back. Hmm. I make sure I've got, I think I've got a sound echo coming back. Yeah, sorry, I've left my speakers on. That's my fault. My bad. We've got it back. We have. I am Unsinkable Sam. At least that's what they call me around here. Used to be a ship's cat, but the clipper I was on sank when I was the only one to wrestle himself free from the waves. The people here were kind and took me in. Been the King Crab's foremost patron ever since. Oh, tell me about this ship. I wonder if he was on the ship with the, um, the lighthouse keeper's wife. A magnificent ship she was. Used to belong to a pirate, I was told. Unlike me, she didn't prove to be unsinkable, though. We hit the cliffs right neath the lighthouse. Not very apt a name for that building, I must say, for no light was shining from it. Yes, we know the story of that. The moment I hit the water, I writhed around like I would on a hot tin roof. By some miracle, 
I managed to reach the beach, covered in kelp and smelling worse than a fish's funeral parlor. But I was alive, and that was more than anybody else could say. You were the only survivor? So I was. What friends I had. They drowned alongside the rats I used to hunt in the galley. And there I was, all alone. Yeah, the humor's great, isn't it, in this? It's it's not what I expected. I, I thought this would be a fairly straight-laced, serious kind of game. And uh, I'm, I'm loving the light side of it. Not that I have it bad here, mind you. I milk and fish aplenty. Most folks will pet me kindly, and when one of the village girls holds me tight against her ample bosom, I purr up a storm. I bet. But I do long for a companion of my own kind. And in that regard, there is no one like Maxine. Maxine is the mayor's cat, I think. Maxine. Yeah. The mayor's darling pet. So gentle. So fair a feline. The grace of her whiskers, the subtle palette of dyes in her silk coat. She's one of a kind, that cat. Surely it's palette. She likes me. I know she does. But when I declare my love, she backs away. I don't know why. I have serenaded her and braved many a bucket of water for my efforts. <laughs> but for some reason, she is not to be swayed. I have some other questions for you. By all means. Um, I've got an, I've got a um, collar for him. What's your take on the undead? People make a fuss about them because they endanger the lands around the city. They never bother me when I'm out for my monthly walk, though. But still, I do test them. I mean, they're so unnatural, aren't they? Cats can have nine lives, but humans are only entitled to one. And the orcs? Oh, don't mention orcs to me. Worse than dogs, that lot. Sank Walrus Willie's boat right from under him. Walrus Best Willie. Best anchovy fisher in the world he was. A loss to us all. Okay, I'll take my leave. Um, why? What's with you, bipeds and beer? No better drink than milk. About Maxine. Maxine. She likes me. I am unsinkable Sam. At least that's what they call me around here. No? He used to be a ship's cat. Okay. I can't talk to him about the uh, collar I, I've got. I can't give it to him, can I? Uh, is there a search by quest item here? Equipment? Be under miscellaneous, surely. A smelly scar. Nice. I don't know what it'll be under, actually. Maybe it's not under anything. Maybe it's just, I don't know. Okay, that's strange. Let's go and talk to the other cat. And then see uh, see what happens. Let's did we we talked to Esmeral, didn't we? And sorted that out. And the mayor's house is here. Is that right? No, that's Esmeralda's shop. If I, so is this actually? Hang on. Pause. Ah, it's here. Got the two mixed up. Um, Maxine, come here. Oh, you haven't left town yet, have you? <laughs> Jolly good. Join me, why don't you, for a scandalously milky saucer of feral leaf tea? Will I be playing Bannerlord today? No, not today. Um, I'm not, I'll tell you why. I'm coming back to it, but I'm going to give it a couple of weeks to uh, sort of mature, if you like, to get patched, get some updates, because there's some broken bits in it. And in that last playthrough that I've been playing, um, I've kind of painted myself into a corner by giving away the dragon banner, so now I can't form my own kingdom and I can't get it back. I've got a castle that's impossible to produce anything in because there's some various strange production and morale penalties that we can't get out of. And uh, I'm at war by myself with a faction and our main faction's gone to war with someone else. And I sort of, I wouldn't like to say I've messed it up, but it's in a position where I think it'd be better to restart. So what I'm going to do is going to leave it for a couple of weeks. It'll get some patches. I'll get this finished because I really want to finish this. And then we'll come back to Bannerlord when it's uh, maybe working a bit better. There was a big patch, I think, yesterday. I don't know whether it's the beta patch, actually. It might be a beta patch. Uh, but that changes quite a lot of stuff. I was watching Sircon play, and his two-handed mallet graphic had been replaced with one of those big, long polearm things, but it's still called a mallet. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a bit of work to be done on that. <laughs> um, so we shall we shall return to Bannerlord, because I really like it. Um, Probably, probably after I finish this. So the plan is to play this through the week, 
a strategy game or something different at weekends. And as soon as I'm done with this, back to Van Lord. That's the current plan. Uh, let's see. So, tell me more about yourself, Maxine. I'm the mayor's cat, don't you know? Born and raised on velvets and viands of most exquisite varieties. Maxine rhymes with queen, after all, and dearest. <laughs> that is hardly a coincidence. Hey, I'm back, guys. How is, how, how's it going? Funny how your third character looks like the Witcher. Oh, yeah. I've just noticed that, actually. That is quite a... I think that's maybe more than a coincidence. I wonder if there's been a bit of inspiration when this game was created, because this was... Is this created after Witcher 1? Could be. Could be. About Unsinkable Sam. Oh, he's a darling old Tom, isn't he? Pours over tales in love with me. and Who can blame him? The feeling's, well, it's rather mutual, actually. Oh. But that pet of a puss simply doesn't have a penny to his name. Ah, you're after him for his money. Well, you know... That's what cats want, I suppose. At the risk of sounding as shallow as a spaniel, I can't but admit my love does not come unconditionally. What if we were to have kittens, he and I? They'd jolly well starve, wouldn't they? With an alley cat for a papa? I'm pretty sure cats don't have to buy their own food. Oh dear Sam, he's such a good old bean. But he does rather reside at the bottom of the scratching pole, doesn't he? And dear me, one must have at least a mite of standards. Any other questions? But of course, darling. No. Be my guest. I'll leave. All right, then. Back to the cat. <laughs> Why are we playing matchmaker for two horny cats here? One of which is uh, extremely shallow and conceited. Original Sin was 2014. Oh, Witcher 2. Witcher 2 was 2011. That was... I thought, I thought it was actually since then, but... Um, wow, so I've got some catching up to do in Witches. About Maxine. So there's the rub. I am but a stray, and she is the mayor's cat. Oh, I do understand her, I do. She wants a tom of means, not privation. One who brings home the sardines and the occasional halibut. Would that I still had my collar. Such Here a we marvel go. it was. As bejeweled as the night sky with precious stones. Said to have once been worn by a far-off Maharaja's best hunting cheater. Hunting cheater. Like the king of all cats I looked when I wore it. A gift bestowed upon me by a princess whom I had kept company during a long and perilous voyage. A precious band of gemstones lost as I was tossed around by the waves like a ball in a game of catch. Among the waves it remains, I imagine. One, perhaps, by a crab who fancies himself a Caesar with it. If only I could be the Caesar again. And Maxine, my Caesarina. Caesarina? If he'd let me get a word in sideways. Wait, whiskers! You found my collar? Oh, thank you! Bless you! I shall don it right this instant and hie me to Maxine as fast as my paws can carry me. You have made me the happiest cat in the world. Indeed you have. Okay. Let's follow him. I want to see what happens. Well, I don't want to see what happens. I'm not I'm not I'm not a pervert. But um <laughs> let's go and see what uh, what transpires. Maxine, my love, look at me. I am wearing it. The collar I told you about. The one you told me was but the fancy of a dream. Here it is. A band of jewels such as no one in Sicile has ever beheld. Dear me, but that choker looks absolutely fabulous on you. Simply smashing. I can't believe it's real. Oh, darling Sam, you are a tom of means after all. <laughs> that I am, my little tigress. Behold my true collar and marry me. Make me yours, and my very life I shall dedicate to your happiness. <laughs> oh, what a passionate puss you are, my darling Sam. As impetuous as ever. But indeed, you do seem to have the right and reason to be. Oh, I shall hold you in suspense no longer. Yes, my dear Sam, I will marry you. With a word, you have stopped my heart and set it beating anew with untold vigor. Come. My love, my lean-tailed lady. By the fire of the hearth, let us lie and purr the night away. Go for it. 
<laughs> we got the cat married. Brilliant. So next time you hear cats wailing outside your window at two o'clock in the morning, it's actually quite poetic what they're saying. They're trying to woo their ladies. Apparently. Uh, okay, I'm sure, I'm sure Pan's going to have something to say about this. Was that Jehan? Talk. It is a pity indeed to see how this treasure of a cat, this pinnacle of nature's beauty, has been corrupted by the wretched moors of man. Base materialism has darkened the purity of her soul and has seized the very throne where love should rest. That's quite astute, um, an observation actually. Let the story of Sam and his beloved serve as an example of this bitter truth. Between two humans, no love is unconditional. So strongly does this sad depravity seep from our every pore that it adulterates the innocence of what should be stainless spirits. Mind you, Jehan does have quite the uh, tale of heartbreak of his own, doesn't he? If I remember right. We suffer from the inability to bestow love devoid of logic, devotion devoid of design. Wealth, status, prestige, the carnality of flesh and fortune. Those are the true motivators of the affections between a woman and a man. Love. It is the name we give a base ambition, a delusion we blindly compel to be true and therefore falsely hold to be absolute. Pity love and be wary of her too, for she is but a deception. <laughs> He's going on about this deep and meaningful bit about love, right? And someone in the background was shouting about lettuces. Uh, I must agree that, alas, I've never seen an example of true love except in songs and stories. No, I'm going to go with an utterly cynical thing to say. Love is not a delusion. It is one of the great wonders of this world. I concur. A cynic, am I? A heart washed in bitter streams because I have come to realize that love is but the vagary of fantasies, the intemperance of puerile minds. Okay, he's going off on one now. I shall not deny that my mind too was puerile once, that I too loved a woman with all my soul, believing her to be... to be... Ah, enough. Forget what I said. Dig love a grave <laughs> and there let it rot. Okay. That's got to be his finishing line, surely. Quite a good one to finish on, I think. Right. Okay. So we're, we're delving more into his history. We've sorted the cat out. Let's have a quick look. Headless Nick. That one's now done. Um, we need... Oh, hang on. And then we've met an enchanted severed head who asked us to take him to Reginald's cellar to talk in privacy. And how are we going to do that? Let's go, let's go and see if we can pull this off. Hey Indigo, how's it going? There's the severed head. Tricks are for kids! This here is the greatest illusion in Andervale! Bravo! Do I have to wait? Back for more, I see! Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Um, what with Stefan rattling off legendary yarn after yarn. Take a seat, won't you? Let's discuss your talking head. I think you've gotten quite familiar enough by now, thanks. Keep your paws in your pockets, if you please. How about your competition, Cedric? Ha! Yes, I know of that talentless bull. He was here entertaining the troops before I was brought in. I'm sure the hack simply bored his audience to tears until they cried for a replacement. Enter Reginald the Illusionist! We need our boys in Okay. Red. I think I need to get rid of his audience. I need to get his audience over here. And if I can do that, I can probably grab that head. I think that's what I need to do. I'm working on that. Hey, Strap on Gun. Nice to see you. You playing Bannerlord too? Thanks for the link on YouTube, by the way. The um, that video with the guide on how to use the orders and tactics that that was really helpful. Cheers. Right, let's let's see. Is this Cedric? No, it's not. Where's Cedric? Is this Cedric? This is Cedric. Right. I'm going to tell him about the talking head and let's see if we can. A familiar face. 
Come watch the show. What show? It seems even my usually choosy audience has been taken in by that hack's You have talked about this, haven't we? I don't know how he inspires such love. Don't pity me when Reginald. Right, we talked all that before. There's nothing new. That's what I was looking for. Do you even remember how to play Divinity Sin after Banner Lord? Yes, I'm getting right back into it. We set things on fire and we steal everything. And that pretty much sums it up, right? Just you wait. Detective Kip is on the case. We've got a detective chicken. Well, good luck. Okay, so. Another option is trying to get this <sighs> an act to do. Uh, where's the act? There's pirate notes. Not that. Robert's ledger. Cracking up a crowd, the definitive guy. Okay, let me read this. I wish he'd shut up. Uh, some of Rivlon's funniest stories, enough to make granite statue grin. The dwarven lady. You there? You look like an actor just waiting for his big debut. My word! Bravo! You there? Um, you look like an actor just waiting for his big debut. Right, go on, let's try this. I'm going to put on a show. It's successful or not, it might what get the audience away from that head. This time. Uh, let's see. I like to start my performance. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'll do a one-man show. On playing to you hear distant mutterings of curiosity. Yes, let's begin. Let's begin. Oh, now, now. Let's begin. Let's, now, now. let's not be hasty. They may be dragging their feet, but your show is uh, sure to knock the crowd's socks off. Oh, I wonder if I just have to as soon as they settle drag into them their over. Seats, yes, is. there they come. Then I run. I sprint over there and get the head. This is the plan. This is the, this is the plan. We could maybe set them on fire at the same time. Any more coming? We've got a few. Let's begin. The stage is yours. Ah, oh, because I've read the book, I've got the jokes. Okay, during a dwarven funeral, the bearers of the casket accidentally bump into a wall and hear a faint moan. The crowd breaks into an approving chuckle. Continue, by all means. Simply marvellous. Fantastic. Um, it must be this bit. They open the casket and find out the dwarven woman inside Good is actually show. alive. Her husband is filled with joy. Good show. Eager to hear more, the crowd leans forward with great interest. One lady in the back is already chuckling. She must have heard this one before. Okay, the dwarven lady lives for ten more years and then Good dies. Show. There's another funeral for her. Oh, I hope there's an uncle. I wish I'd read the others as, the as closely. Curiosity is peaked. Oh, do go on before they explode. Um. Marvelous. Oh, I hope there's an encore. At the end of the service, the bearers carry out the casket. Simply That's marvelous. That's it, Source Hunter. You've got this joyful crowd right where you want them. Now, take them on home. Simply marvelous. As they're walking out, the husband cries out, "Watch out for the wall!" They Bravo. like you. They really, really like you. Well done, Source Hunter. I like that uh, that sexy, silky, smooth narrator's yeah, voice. Yeah. That's really nice. Okay, end. Because I didn't read the rest of the jokes. But I think I can guess. Come on. Come on. Can't you? Quick, the crowd's gone from over here. No, it hasn't. Okay. Well, shall we do the two-man show now? Right, well, let's read the next next story. What was it? Um, I'll follow it up. Read. So it's the one about the orc, right? Elf and orc show up in the Hall of Echoes at the same time. How did that happen? The elf replied, Well, I came home, thought I heard my wife in bed with someone else in my search house, couldn't find anywhere. Oh, I know this joke. It's about, a, oh yeah, there's a, there's a human version with a fridge and... Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do the elf and the orc then. And then that should be dead easy to do the last one. Talk. What is it this What do you think of my one-man show? Well, I, 
I must say, that was, well, impressive. A bit like myself during my blue period, if I do say so myself. Here, have a little something from the fair coffer. I'll start I'd... my performance oh, again. Let's do a two-man show. And I'd like to be the king of Stormfist, but I haven't got the credentials, have I? Oh, okay. Come back when you found some material. Um, oh, I'll do a one-man show. You're not planning on playing to an empty audience, are you? You hear distant mutterings of curiosity as a small crowd Try shuffles it again. towards your stage. I don't know if it'll make any difference doing this three times. A few moments longer, and everyone will be seated. See, I don't know if the idea is that they will they will come back with more people every time to grow a bigger audience. Or whether it's just the same people. I honestly don't know. It's the same three people, I think. Let's begin. The stage is yours. An elf and an orc show up in the Hall of Echoes at the same time. Which I think is like heaven. The orc says he froze to death and the elf says he died of a heart attack. The crowd breaks into an approving chuckle. Continue, by how did, all means. How did that happen? Asks the orc. What a tale! <laughs> Eager to hear more, the crowd leans forward with great interest. One lady in the back is already chuckling. She must have heard this one before. The elf replied, Well, I came home and thought I heard my wife with another person. But when I searched the house, I couldn't find anybody. The crowd's curiosity is piqued. Oh, do go on before they explode. I was so stricken with remorse for wrongly accusing my wife of infidelity, I had a heart attack and died on the spot. Good show! That's it, Source Hunter. You've got this joyful crowd right where you want them. Now, take them on home. Geez, says the orc, if you'd open the icebox, we'd both be alive right now. They like you. They really, really <laughs> like you. Okay. Well done, Source Hunter. That was a terrible joke. Let's go and meet my audience. Talk to them. You there. Good job. You look like an actor just waiting for you. Something marvellous. Okay. What is it this time? What do you think of my one-man show? Don't let your head swell too much now. I may have quite enjoyed your last performance, but I'm not one to gush. He's got a claw to say. Okay, I'll take my leave. Um, Took my pet away, did. Very good. Very good. Okay, it's not made any difference to these lot though, so... By the seven. What a tale! B, what I need to do is... Get these to go over to Cedric, which is his competition, and then the head's there to be stolen. This is my plan. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't even know how I'm going to do it. I haven't got any material to do it with either, that's the thing. There's no more books. If I ever had a book, I think I've sold it. Which is a, a shame. What's that? Oh, I've already read this. Okay. Doesn't tell me what it is. Doesn't mouse over and tell me what it is. Strange. Zombie painting. I can sell that, I suppose. I haven't put it in there, have I? And I haven't... I haven't made... Just make sure I haven't got it on somebody else. Oh, we carried that big chest with us, didn't we? <laughs> that massive ornate chest. Okay. Yeah, we nicked it. We're going to use that when we get the chance. Oh, this, the order of source no, it's not going to be that. Traveller's journal. The merchant in the apple tree. Read. There once lived a malicious and greedy merchant whose heart was filled with one desire to make as much money as possible. This isn't... Is this a play? Um, I'll just send that to... I don't think it is, but... Nick's diary. Send that to Mark as well. 